this gives me a lot of pleasure. Because, after all, this is a slightly audacious title, isn't it? For science, do we need it? Well, we definitely need the conversation. So, what I'd like to do to begin with, um, if you're a voice scientist, please put your hand up. Okay, and we have a few here. Alan, your hand should be up. <laughs> if you're more of a voice pedagogue or singer or a voice educator, put your hand up. Are you a voice researcher that maybe doesn't consider yourself so much a scientist, but also a pedagogue. There's a few of us. Very few of us. Okay. You know, one of the recent PVOCs, I think maybe it was Ghent 2017, I happened to be on the train with Jan Svet, and we got to talking about how many prominent voice scientists are also singers and musicians. Turns out that the personal story Alan shared with us on, on Wednesday is a returning theme. A singer trained in another discipline, becoming frustrated that they can't find the answers to what they're supposed to do to sing better. And we should be grateful for these events because what is research if not asking questions and looking for the answers? So the reason why we're here today is to look at why is it that sometimes the voice scientists and the singing pedagogues seem to be in different camps? Is it perhaps because music is an emotional experience? I'll leave that thought there. As it happens, I've been challenged from both sides. Back in 2007, I was asked to do a main theme presentation on voice pedagogy for musical theatre. I think it was PVOP 7. And my first questioner asked why I hadn't used the correct and recognised scientific terms when talking about registers. I responded that I was reporting on the practice of voice pedagogy, and while I understood laryngeal mechanisms, this terminology was not routinely used in our culture. Okay, fast forward to our last PVOC in 2019, where I gave a short coaching session at the Ebta Round Table and afterwards shared my pedagogical experience of working with MT and CCM singers. I spoke about the importance of managing mechanisms one and two for successful performance. I was pretty much shouted down at one point by a teacher who was clearly very upset. Well, it was an incident that caused me to reflect deeply on the relationship between our two communities. You see, the point is that for this lady, it wasn't just about cognitive dissonance. This was, in fact, her first, her first voice science conference. So it's likely she didn't know the theory behind the concept of register as a laryngeal mechanism. But I suspect, even if she had known, without the information to map it on her own experience as a teacher and singer, she'd have still been upset. As a teacher and a researcher, and very much in voice education now, I can appreciate the challenges from both sides. It's where I sit in my own work as a voice educator, and it's definitely why I'm standing up here today. It isn't enough to say, the problem is, you don't understand what you're disagreeing with. We need to help teachers reframe their experience and existing knowledge in the light of our voice science findings. And pedagogues need to help the voice scientists frame methodologies that take into account the real-life experience of singing. And that's not an easy task, as I know from my own PhD. So let's talk. 